Hey guys, Super Horror Bro Mike here, and in today's video, we take a look at the ghosts of Yondu High School with a rundown of each and every terrifying spectre, spirit, and spook to be found throughout the game. We'll take a look at the backstory of each ghost, how to summon them in the game, and footage of their associated jump scare. It should be noted that if you are trying to collect these ghosts for yourself, to set the in-game difficulty mode to hard. Most of these ghosts will not appear in lower settings. Also, this is part 1 of a two-part series as there are 20 ghosts to cover in total, so today we'll be looking at the first 10. A second video will follow in the coming days. With that small disclaimer out of the way, sit back, relax, and join me as we take this virtual ghost tour together. Long ago when the school was first established, there was a housemistress named Miss C. Students feared her for she was very strict and eager to dole out harsh punishment to any pupil who broke school rules and misbehaved. One fateful day, a student from Miss C's dorm fell to her death while trying to sneak out an open window to celebrate her midterms. Rumours spread that Miss C had killed the girl, and when the housemistress learned of these allegations, she fell into a deep depression. However, she remained as strict as ever. This led the other students to rebel against her, when one day, Miss C dragged a girl, whose hair was longer than school regulations allowed, into the bathroom and cut it with a pair of scissors. The school's angry classmates surrounded the housemistress in the bathroom and protested, jeering and insulting her. This was the final straw, and Miss C snapped and fled the school. Her body was found cold and dead on a nearby mountainside a few days later. When we enter the girls' bathroom on the third floor of Main Building 2 and stare into the mirror above the second sink, with only the flame of our lighter equipped, the ghost of the housemistress reappears, still wielding her scissors. To unlock this creepy encounter, you must first acquire the cigarettes, located atop the doorframe of the final cubicle in the first floor bathroom of Main Building 1. Although we never actually see the fox spirit in person, her encounter is nonetheless highly unsettling. Referred to as the Invisible Voice, we see her pictured here, a female student with a long, bushy tail. Her concept is derived from the kumyo found in Korean folklore, a figure who seduces boys and then feasts on their hearts. The fox spirit inhabits the dark corridor that bridges the gap between Main Building 2 and the school's new building. Students deliberately avoided this hallway after rumours spread of ghostly hauntings within. We encounter her only by entering this area without the possession of the spirit bell. If one does this, then they will hear the invisible spirit singing the nursery rhyme Oranges and Lemons from the shadows around them. Sometimes this playful spirit will decide to shock the player, by abruptly stopping her song and screaming at them. Don't 
By examining the walls while exploring this maze-like corridor, we happen upon large claw marks, an indication this spirit is indeed feral and animalistic in nature. At certain points, in certain rooms, while exploring this haunted school, you may catch the sight of a female student lying on the floor as if asleep. Her body blue and bloodless. Upon interacting with a lying student, her body will vanish, only to appear in a different room later on. She is located first in the night duty room, followed by classroom 33, 36, and finally 39. Interact with her in each of these rooms, and we finally see her lifeless face. However, it isn't lifeless for long. The female student is named Ji Hai, and was the girlfriend of fellow student Mong Ho. When she broke up with him and refused his repeated attempts to get back together, Mong Ho became enraged. He decided to bring a knife to school and scare Ji Hai to mend his wounded ego. But Ji Hai saw through his scare tactics and began to ridicule and tease her angry ex. In a fit of blind rage, the boy lashed out and slashed Ji Hai with the blade. She fell to the floor and bled out in class before help could arrive. Hence her ghostly pose and name, Lying Female Student. The woman in the closet is the ghost of an unfortunate woman who was bricked up inside a tiny cabinet during the Japanese occupation of Korea. Her husband had dodged conscription from the war, and so, as punishment, his wife was tortured for information, but held her silence. The poor woman was forced to stand inside a tiny closet where she could neither sit nor lay. Eventually, the woman died on her feet, her body bent and twisted so badly that it hardly fit inside a coffin. The school building now stands where the concentration camp once was, and as a result, when opening lockers in the dark, some say the mangled body of the woman sometimes appears, shrieking out in agony. We encounter the tree ghost in main building 1 after it wraps its roots around So Young and snatches her away. In order to destroy this boss enemy, He-Min must poison the tree's pods with insecticide and then burn down the monstrosity in its newly weakened state. This method of destruction is interesting when we learn of the history behind this particular spirit. You see, there was once a teacher at the school called Mr. B, a sad and lonely man who never made the time to speak with his fellow teachers nor students, instead devoting his spare time to taking care of his plants, tending to a selection of small trees on the school grounds each day. One student accidentally spilt chemicals on Mr. B's favourite tree, and knowing that it would shrivel and die, quickly replaced it with a new one and burnt the evidence. However, as the student burnt the tree, it screamed out as if in pain. Mr. B ran out in horror, dashing into the open flames to be with his beloved plant. Reunited with the tree, he burned to death in the process. Shortly after this tragic and bizarre event, a student wandered the halls of the school after hours and found a strange man standing before the plants in Mr. B's old homeroom. The stranger held a small dog in one hand as he smeared its organs and blood on the leaves and stem of the plant before him with the other. Upon seeing the girl, he smiled and said, Oh good, I was running out of food for my plant. Another boss type enemy is the Diary Keeper's Baby, so named because it is the deceased, unborn child of a student called Saul Hyun, who kept a diary chronicling her love affair with the art teacher at the school. 
When their romance was discovered, the teacher was promptly fired. But Sol Hyun had fallen pregnant, and when informed, the banished art teacher told her to get rid of the baby. He scolded her, declaring he never wanted to see the poor girl again. Fragile and alone, Sol Hyun fell into despair. One night, she snuck into the art room and moulded her final piece of art, a small clay doll that looked just like her. The next morning, as the students entered the art room, they discovered Sol Hyun's body, dead from an overdose of sleeping pills. Now the spirit of her unborn baby roams the halls of Main Building 2, wishing to reunite with its mother, whose spirit is tethered to the unfinished clay doll. In order to defeat this killer baby, He-Min must finish the doll by firing it in the kiln and then returning it to the Wailing Spirit. Finally, mother and child can rest in peace. While walking past this window in Main Building 1, you may notice a suspicious set of bloody handprints pressed up against the glass outside. They belong to a ghoulish sight indeed. This rotting corpse belongs to the ghost of a schoolgirl named Dae Som, whose bloated body was found floating in the school pond. The pond was said to be cursed, as it had been formed from a crater left by a bomb dropped during the Korean War. A group of refugees had pitched their tents on the exact same spot the bomb dropped, and so many believed the murky waters of a school pond to now be haunted by their ghosts. There was another story about the pond as well. If a person writes to their crush asking them to come to the pond and they show up, you'll live happily ever after. However, if they don't show up, you will die by the pond's curse. Daesom had written a love letter to her crush, but unfortunately, he never showed up. And so, just like the envelope the letter came in, Daesom's fate was sealed. In fact, to summon this ghost, we must locate the very love letter Daesom sent to her crush and return it to her. The starved ghost was once a girl attending the high school called Young Me. She would look in the mirror and see herself as overweight, even though her classmates told her otherwise. Despite this, young me, disgusted by her body in the mirror, decided to stop eating and only drink water. This self-abuse continued until she was only skin and bones, eerily staggering around the school like a skeleton. Her classmates and teachers eventually stopped trying to help young me and grew frightened of her appearance. Soon after, her body was found dead in the nearby mountains. Upon entering the school storeroom in the new building, we are able to summon the remains of this starved student. Simply take a lunchbox and place it on this dinner tray. A hand will reach up and take it. Perform this action twice and be ready for a shock. The final ghost for today's video can be found in the music appreciation room and, as the name suggests, always hides her face from others. Her student name was Un Ah, now a dangerous spirit who will kill anyone who approaches and tries to look upon her disfigured face.
To defeat the girl with the hidden face, we must collect the Yin Yang token. The light from this amulet vanquishes the spirit and lifts the curse from the music room. Throughout this battle, the girl with the hidden face sings, ready or not, faster and faster, and if we are not quick enough to reach her, attacks viciously, revealing her scarred facial features. It is said Un Ah was once a bully who made fun of another student's appearance. This led to the victim taking their revenge by throwing sulfuric acid from the science lab across Un Ah's face. She was once the prettiest girl at the school, but no more. With half her face eaten away by the acid, Un Ah became a recluse, shutting herself away from the outside world and refusing to attend school. Because she remained in the darkness of her bedroom for so long, Un Ah's eyesight became weaker and weaker until she could no longer stand to look upon the light at all. She eventually leapt from the roof of her family home and landed face first on the pavement, destroying any remaining beauty she had. And on that chilling note, we come to the end of episode 1 of The Ghosts of White Day Explained. This is a two-part series, so do stay tuned for a look at the final 10 ghosts coming soon. But for now, I hope you enjoyed this video, and if you did, remember to leave me a like, comment down below, and of course subscribe for more horror-related content. Thanks for watching, and I will see you on the next video.